Hello YouTube, how's it going? How's all my Paradise on 18 Wheels out there doing? Hope you're doing good, hope you're driving safe, hope you're making money, hope everything is good. Happy Halloween by the way, today is Halloween. As you can see, I'm in my truck for Halloween. Like pretty much most, most of you probably are. So yeah, I wanted to uh, Talk to you guys. Talk to you guys about these uh, onboard cameras that um, these companies have, uh, and uh, you know I don't uh, disagree with them. I do think they do uh, work. I do uh, like them. You know they do protect the uh, driver. You know for those uh, crazy drivers like California. They like to uh, cut in front of you, literally, get right in front of you. As soon as they pass you, jump right back in front of you. It's crazy. Not only do the uh, people who live there do that, but what I also notice is the truck drivers who have California license plates on their trailers, they do the exact same thing as the people who live there that drive cars, which makes sense. I would probably say that most of the people that have California license plates on their license plate on their uh, trailer are from California. So they bring their bad, very bad driving habits to the uh, trucking industry. And, uh, you know, they drive super fast, very crazy in California. I think they have a death wish. I truly believe that. But I do believe in karma, guys. So I was in California. I was on my way out, heading toward uh, Weed, California. Um, I moved over to the left lane to let some traffic on to the freeway. As soon as I got over the left lane, I had all these owner, operate, owner operators get in the right lane. They wouldn't let me back over. And they were driving super fast. I was doing 55. Had my cruise control at 55 because that's the speed limit in California. Just in case you truck drivers that are watching this video, the speed limit in California is 55 maximum. If you look at their signs, it says maximum at the bottom and it's all in bold letters. So that means 55 is all you can do as a truck driver in California. Well, anyways, I had these owner operators that were on my right lane and uh, wouldn't let me get back over, even, as, even though I was using my turn signal to get back over the right lane, because I know in California they're very strict about truck drivers being in the left lane. But I had these uh, owner operators that were just being uh, obnoxious and uh, mean. I don't know, maybe they don't like the company that I work for. That's what I'm thinking. Anyways, uh, <laughs> karma, karma bit one of them in the booty got in front of me CHP pulled him over right in front of me got him good speeding and changing lanes without using signal because that's what he did as soon as he got in front of me I guess he thought he can teach me a lesson or make me feel like I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to be doing but as soon as he passed me he jumped right in front of me no turn signal that's a huge no-no for truck drivers. Huge. They got them for speeding and changing lanes without signaling. And I'm sure that's what CHP caught him for. But that was karma right there in the full effect. Got him good, guys. I was so happy. I was clapping my hand, jumping up and down in my seat. Yeah, he deserved that one. He was lucky that the other two truck drivers that were behind him didn't also get pulled over. He just pulled over the guy that was running the front door of those, of that convoy of owner operators that wouldn't let me back in the right lane. So anyways, just wanted to bring that up guys. When you're in California, the speed limit is 55 guys, not 70. Don't be a super trucker, okay? You need to protect your license because uh, Let's just face it, guys. <clears throat> Everyone knows the trucking industry 
super, super high turnover, okay? 190, 200% turnover. Protect your license. Don't be a super trucker for the company that you're working for currently. Do not be driving 70 miles an hour when it's 55. It's a good way. It's a good way to uh, put a mark on your license and then you're gonna have a hard time getting another job at a different location. Especially if the company you're going to has really beautiful equipment, okay? Beautiful trucks, beautiful trailers. Those ones right there, guys, you better have a good, clean driving record if you wanna go to those type of companies. Or they're not gonna hire you if you come in with a ticket on your record, okay? Keep that in mind, guys. I can't stress that enough. I see drivers every day, super truckers, left and right, just passing me like I'm not even moving. Going way over the speed limit. A good 15, 20 miles over the speed limit, guys. I'm telling you guys, you want to drive for a long time in, the, in, in this industry. You want to have the good jobs in the future. I'm talking to those people who are just starting out truck driving. Yeah, you know I mean, you guys that are experienced or watching my video, you should know better already. But these people that are just starting out, because the company I do currently work with, do hire new people, okay? So if you guys want to have a future in this industry, you want to drive really nice equipment, nice matching trailers, top of the line trucks, fully loaded with all the bells and whistles, to get those jobs, you can't have no driving tickets, okay? Keep that in mind. So I wanted to bring up the uh, subject uh, I was talking about, about the uh, cameras, onboard cameras. The current company that I work for does have them. And uh, like I said, I don't mind it in the truck. I do think it saves the driver. But this one that's in this truck, that this company puts in their trucks, takes up a lot of real estate on the windshield. It just flat out gets in the way. I mean, it's hard, like when you're driving around like really curvy mountain terrain, you can't see where the uh, highway is turning to because you got this big camera that's taking up all the real estate on the windshield right in the view of a driver. I'm gonna flip the camera in a second so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This camera is way, way too big. It takes up way too much real estate. Now I have seen other truck, trucking companies do have the cameras. And I'll show you the one on the right. There's two cameras in here. I don't know why, but there is. There's two cameras in this truck. And the smaller one is the one that I do see and a lot of the other trucking companies, windshields. And I wish this company I work for had the exact same thing because this one that they have in here it's really big and it takes up a lot of real estate on the windshield and it's, it obstructs your view. It's a safety hazard. You can't even, like when you're looking for addresses, when you're uh, getting into this heavy traffic city limits, that thing gets in your way. It really obstructs your view. It, it, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't know who made, up, who made that decision and put in this big giant plastic black camera and right in the windshield I don't know how DOT officers don't give us tickets for that as we all know you're not supposed to have big objects on your windshield so how does this company get away with it I don't know but it does take up a lot of real estate and like I said it's dangerous it's highly dangerous it's very hard for me to see sometimes when I'm going around curves uh, looking for addresses I'm gonna show you right now what I'm talking about. Let me flip the camera around. You see that big thing right there, guys? Look at that, that thing takes up a lot of real estate. Look at that big thing, it's a monster. There you go. Just imagining driving the truck, this right in your view. It takes up a lot of real estate on the windshield. See that one on the right? That's another camera. That's the one I'm telling you about I see on a lot of other uh, trucking companies. They have this one. It's small. Look, it's really small. Barely. I mean, if you put that small one right up here in the middle, it's not going to take up a lot of real estate. It doesn't obstruct your view. 
Okay, look. Here's the uh, driver's seat right here. Let me, uh, that's the driver's seat, guys, okay? Now, let me pan over here. Look at that big thing. Smack right in your way. Let me see if I, if I can give you guys a better angle if I sit down on the driver's seat. Okay, here's the front view. This is what you're looking out at. But if you have to go this way, look at, look, look. Look at that big, it takes up a lot of real estate, guys. Look at that. Look, and then you're forced to put this guy right here because you can't put it anywhere else. You put it right here, it's gonna be smack in your way. You know, we got the GPS right here. This is that Garmin OTR 800, guys, that I told you I was gonna give you a review about. <clears throat> Just haven't done it yet. Let's get back on topic. That's another uh, video. Just wanted to show you this big, giant camera that this company that I work for currently puts in their trucks. It's obstructive. It's dangerous. It gets in my way. It's hard to see the road. It makes it very dangerous for driving, guys. I don't know why they decided to put this big giant black box right smack in the middle of the windshield when they should have put just this little camera because that's a forward camera also. So what is this one? It's a camera also, but what else does it do? I have no idea. Highly dangerous, guys. Highly, highly. Let me flip the camera around. All right, guys. <sighs> Just wanted to make a quick video, let you guys know your driving habits out there are very bad. Um, you know, when I went to truck driving school and went, had a trainer, I had to stay with the trainer for five months, six months, no, sorry, six months, I'm sorry, six months. And, uh, what I see out there now that I've been back out here on the road, it's absolutely crazy. It's crazy that these companies are letting these drivers get out on a truck because they don't know how to drive. They drive like super truckers. They put that pedal to the metal. But you know what I've noticed, guys? In the truck stops, they can't back up a truck for nothing. It takes some 10, 15 minutes to back into a hole at a truck stop. These companies must be uh, super desperate for drivers because they will put anybody behind a wheel. It's very dangerous. I mean, I'm scared when I'm at a truck stop. Somebody backs up next to me. I'm getting out of the truck and I'm helping them out. Because mostly, I would say 90 percent of the drivers that I have seen at the truck stops they can't back up a trailer nope hmm well anyways guys uh, give you guys an update Lori is uh, waiting on her uh, she did take the sleep study test which if you guys are coming into this industry and you have sleeping uh, disorder and they uh, find out at your DOT uh, physical, uh, I just want you guys to know at the company I'm currently with, I don't know about other companies, but the company I'm currently with, you will be required to pay for that all on your own. Okay, so you'll pay, if you go to a private school like we did, or like Lori did, at $6,000 to go to school, and then you're going to pay another $1,500 for your sleep study test and the machine. So it's going to be very expensive for you to get into the trucking industry. So you better uh, have a lot of money saved up because this, currently com this current company that we are both uh, driving for, you will have to pay for it yourself. They don't pay for it. All right. Anyways. Uh, she's at home. She's um, did her sleep study study. She's waiting for the machine to come. It should be at the house by uh, Tuesday and uh, so uh, Hopefully this company I'm working for will uh, get me back over there to pick her up um, I have been I already took the uh, course and passed the uh, the test and all that for uh, being a mentor here at this company 
so I will be her uh, mentor and uh, looking forward to getting her on the truck so we can shoot all kinds of different uh, mentor trainer videos for all you uh, guys out there that are uh, wanting to know all this uh, different information that you're gonna need when you come to truck driving school to take your test and pass your DOT um, well, not your DOT I'm sorry pass your uh, driving test your pre-trip and post-trip inspections we're gonna pretty much give you all the information that you're gonna need to know when you do go to a truck driving school of your choice remember this company does offer uh, schooling but um, you will have a restriction on your license they only train you in automatic so just keep in mind if you ever go somewhere else it has a really good high paying job and they won't hire you if you don't have that if you have that restriction on your license if you can't drive a stick shift just keep that in mind guys if you have to go back to a truck driving school because you will because I kind of played the uh, part that I was a student I went to uh, I said I went to uh, this company I went to their school I worked for them for uh, two years and now I'm trying to get a, a job that has stick shift but they won't let me how much would it cost me to come to your school to learn how to drive a stick shift they told me I'd have to pay the full tuition that's six thousand dollars guys so keep that in mind think very hardly about that your decision on what trucking school you want to go to do you really want to have that restriction on your license okay anyways guys have a happy happy Halloween I'll see you guys on the next video hopefully Lori will be on the truck by then so we can start shooting all those videos for you guys and and get you guys going on your uh, your trucking career so uh, anyways guys talk to you soon take care happy Halloween bye bye